Good morning and welcome back to the One Celtic Fans View this morning. It is Thursday the 14th of November. Yes, we're getting even closer to Christmas. And if you are talking about Christmas, if you are looking for any Celtic-related gift ideas, not just for Christmas, but for uh, birthdays and special occasions, jump over to Amazon and you'll get the One Celtic Fans View Amazon shop, where there's over there's now over 500 gift ideas for your beloved that uh, want something to do with Celtic, or if you're just looking for a specialist trainers or anything like that, have a look at it. It's the first one in the description, and it'll be the first link in the first comment, also pinned comment on the comment section of this video. Anyway, moving on to Celtic news this morning, there's lots to get through. First of all, I want to talk about Liam Scales, we are going to talk about Casper Schmeichel and the contract situation. We're going to talk about the cost for the stadium rebuild of the main stand, which has came out. But first of all, we want to talk about Nathan Collins of Ireland. That saw Liam Scales play for uh, play at 14 year old, and he knew that he would reach the top of the game. Both Nathan Collins and Liam Scales are set to start for Ireland in Thursday's Nation Cup clash against Finland. Away from prying eyes, Nathan Collins says that he pulled Scales aside and thanked him for having his back. <laughs> Collins has just gifted. Um, yeah, yeah, he's just, he's got much love for the one and only Liam Scales. They've traded defensive one-twos um, in the past, but they're absolute rocks together. And he says that Le he always knew that Liam Scales would get to the top of the game. Anyway, back to Scottish football. And Aberdeen manager, yep, the Aberdeen manager, when we look at the league table, Aberdeen are quite relentless this season. And it's a breath of fresh air that Aberdeen, yes, Aberdeen are sitting just in that, second position but they are sitting with um the same the same points which is fantastic at this time of the season if you ask me it is fantastic that aberdeen are sitting with the same points as celtic obviously celtic with a vastly improved goal difference but the aberdeen manager the aberdeen manager has been talking about celtic and he's been talking about the fact that aberdeen needs to get back to playing european football and not only because of the re re relentless nature that it's offered Celtic uh, to play at such a high level, which has kept them perched at the top of the table. Jimmy, we Jimmy up in Aberdeen, says that if Aberdeen can get back into Europe, uh, and, and Aberdeen are a club with a great history, uh, accumulating the, the Cup Winners' Cup under Alex Ferguson back in 1993. He wants, uh, 83, sorry, not 93. He wants Aberdeen to get back to playing regular in in. Uh, European football and he sees the Celtic model he sees Celtic model as the perfect example on the way that Aberdeen should be using for player trading and for success in the Scottish League it was only a matter of time before one club in Scotland look, went look the way that Celtic have been doing it for the last 10-15 years they're, they're doing something right we need to basically copy their model because if we don't we're going to let Celtic run away with it for the next 10 years and they're going to do another nine in a row um, and I think that that's a, 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 a possibility that we could be on the road to another nine in a row and it would be fantastic if we could do three nine in a row so that would just that would just be the end of um, <laughs> of some people in Scotland but anyway uh, get away from Jimmy he's been he's been loving the fact that uh, the way that Celtic perform and the way that Celtic play at the highest level and he says that look when you look at it, winning 31 points out of 33, he also broke Rogers' winning streak with that 2-2 draw at Celtic Park. And a lot of people will say, look, Celtic were woeful that second half. But they had 32 chances in the whole game. 32 shots on goal. Not many on target, but we had 32 shots on goal that game. It says, but while Dons don't have the rigours of European football and we're managing to juggle domestic efforts, Celtic are juggling domestic efforts in Champions League. And when you look at the money that they're getting from the Champions League, he believes that European football is the road to success for Aberdeen to generate extra income. Anyway, moving on from that, let's get on to Casper uh, Schmeichel. Casper Schmeichel has been talking to the media back home. He has been talking to the media and he was asked about contract talks and how it is playing for Celtic. Because a lot of people have been speaking about the pressure that comes with playing with Celtic. The fact that every game is a must-win game. And you can go from playing Champions League one week to playing at Rugby Park in Kilmarnock on a plastic pitch that's no better than a Sunday League football pitch. 
Mm. Anyway, Gaspar Swico went on to say, he said, look, I'm very happy. Um, I've been playing really well. I love being part of this team. It's a great style of football that we're playing, it, and it suits me very well with Brendan Rodgers. We're off to a good start, but it's not about how you start. I can't complain. We're playing really good football. Last week has been characteristic by our team. He says, we play, we beat... He says, when you look at pre-season and all the hard work that we've done in pre-season, we treat pre-season like the Champions League games. We went out and we beat Manchester City and then we beat Chelsea in the Champions League and people will say, and Chelsea in pre-season, and people will say, but yeah, Man City put a, 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 a weakened team, a, a youthful team. And uh, well, Man City then came, it was alleged that they were wanting to come calling for Kyogo Furiashi after playing in that game. But they didn't, they didn't. Uh, he goes on to say, he says, look, when you look at it, we've taken it a step further than what we did and what our plans were for the pre-season. And we spoke about going into the Champions League. We managed to go to Leipzig and beat Leipzig. And we managed to, uh, sorry, beat Leipzig at Celtic Park. And it says, we're in a good place. Uh, we can play many different types of games, which is good at Celtic. And then when he was speaking about the pressures and demands of playing for Celtic, when in every game, regardless of the opponent, he says, other than the win, it's a failure. He says, I feel good about that. It's a completely different type of pressure than what I've been used to in my career. It's a new experience, he went on to say. And uh, talking about his, uh, he talked about Matt O'Reilly, uh, another Danish player that was at Celtic that left to go to the riches of the English Premier League. Well, michael has been there and done it when it comes to the English Premier League. He has an English Premier League medal, doesn't he? But he says, Matt O'Reilly touched upon the pressures in a recent interview after the Brighton debut. The midfielder said uh, it, it, it could be hard at Celtic. But Michael then went on to talk about the new deal. He went to talk about the new deal. He does have the option of a second year at Celtic Park. And there's going to be talks in the new year to decide whether or not to take that upon him uh, to take up that second year. Obviously, we know that we have bought Sinas Salo and he's deputising just now with the long-term future to him replacing Kasper Schmeichel as the number one goalkeeper. I wonder how he feels about Kasper staying for the next season. Because let's face it, he is an international player in his own right and he'll be jumping at the bit to get going with Celtic, won't he? Or will he be using this year is an absolutely fantastic educational stance that is and learning process that he's got from Casper Schmeichel and showing him how to compete and not only compete but to play at the highest level with Celtic. Anyway, Casper Schmeichel went on to say, he says, look, one thing at a time. He says, there's an option for another year, but we'll decide at some point next year. Celtic signed Schmeichel with that option. And you've got to admit that Brendan Rodgers loves him as a player. Brendan Rodgers phoned up his mate, old Casper, and said, look, I'm needing a top-class keeper to help this young team of mine in the Champions League. Are you up for it, mate? And his mate went, yeah, why not? He says, we'll give you a two-year contract. You can give one if you think that you want to retire because, let's face it, he's at the same age as our previous keeper retired. But I think Casper michael has got definitely another year at, him at the top level. Tell me what you think in the comment section. Do you think that Casper Schmeichel uh, does have it in him to play up to his 40? I mean, there's, there's been some fantastic keepers around Europe that have played into their 40s at the highest level. And some of them for the greatest teams in Europe also. Anyway, um, I think that Kasper Schmeichel is a fantastic keeper. I think he will take up the option of that second year. Just to make sure that Sinisalo is ready to step right into his boots. And when he steps into his boots, it will basically be just as you were Celtic, wouldn't it? Anyway, let's get on to the story of the day. Yes, the report. There has been a report allegedly by the, the, the mail of all, all people, uh, talking about the price tag of the main stand at Celtic. Now, we'll all agree that Celtic Park is an absolutely fantastic stadium, and I love this picture of Celtic Park at night. And when it's up in lights and, and it's full glory on a winter's evening, there's nothing better than paradise at Celtic Park. Anybody that calls it Parkers will get banned from this channel straight away. But you have to admit, it is a fantastic stadium. It is absolutely beautiful. And and when you look at it like that, and you see the Celtic lit it up in the, main, in the north stand, a lot of people say that we need to increase this, the main stand. Yes, the south stand. But there comes a few issues with increasing the main stand. And, and one of them is obviously, it will, well, 
Now let's look at the positives. It would look absolutely aesthetically beautiful. It would look like a lot of modern football stadiums. There's a lot of stadiums down in England now getting built up to something similar of Celtic Park. Celtic really need to up the game. There was at one point that Celtic Park was the biggest stadium in, in the British Isles. But... If Celtic were to upgrade the stadium to something like this, it would cause a major issue for Celtic ground staff and a major headache. Because currently when you see the, the stadium, I mean, this is a bad picture because this shows you um, the, 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 the sun in the sky in Scotland that definitely does not sit that high for a three-tier stand on the south stand. It would block out a lot of the sunshine, the natural sunlight for the grass, unfortunately. So this is one of the considerations that Celtic would have to have because uh, you want to get as much sunlight on the grass to make sure the pitch is beautiful because if they didn't, they would then have to use lights all year round and that would come at an extra cost to Celtic. And people will say, well, that with the increased seating capacity, the main stand as it is just now has only around about 8,000 people who sit in that main stand section. And if you take away that to get redeveloped at any point, where do you then sit those 8,000 fans? Because is there really 8,000 people that are not going to be there on a week-to-week -week basis who we can move? Um, and it's a big consideration for Celtic to have if they were to redevelop the stand. I don't think that would make it the three tiers because that's about like a uh, Man United stadium, but they're never going to do that, are they? But there is a bigger chance of them doing something more like this and turning the main stand into uh, the same size as the rest of the stadium. Now, with that, what would the cost be ultimately is what you want to know. Um, the stadium's now approaching its 100 year, 100 year old, um, that part. It was built um, just about 100 years ago, redeveloped. It's the oldest part of the stadium. Um, but some of it, some of it, people say, is, is, uh, is it's showing that it's dated, even though Celtic do uh, do it up on the inside, and uh, they have done up in the last year. Last summer, remember, they did up all the director's box and everything and all that part of the main stand. Um, it is, people say that it's restricted and outdated corporate. Uh, the female toilet reception and press facilities are all outdated. However, the first thing opponents see when they enter upon European nights is that main entrance, which is absolutely fantastic. Despite all the cash in the bank, the main issue has been the cost over the the the, the cost of it. And where do you see sit eight thousand people who've been there since the stadium was built and lo longer than that. Um, not 100 years ago, obviously, but you never know. There could be somebody that's uh, sat in there that long. But anyway, there, there is a lot of people that sat in that main stand for a long time, and I know quite a few people that still do sit in that main stand, and they wouldn't like to get moved. And they see it as a, a little badge of honour having the, the been sitting just next to the director's box. Anyway, it's estimated that it'd be in the region of £80 million, but where do you sit the 8,000 season ticket holders whilst it is carried out? And logically, it's, you would think that it was something that Celtic would have to consider. This article then goes on to say that Celtic could uh, put in the South Stand uh, a museum, a ticket office and a superstore. That's never going to happen because that's the superstore is where it is and they're going to, if they build the hotel there, that will incorporate the museum and ticket office into the hotel structure. We keep forgetting about the hotel. We've had planning permission for the hotel for, it seems like, absolute donkey's years. But whatever happens in the future, Celtic will need to think at some point of redeveloping the main stand. One option that I can see them doing is, instead of knocking down the old stadium, they can put a, a steel structure over the top, a bit like what you see here. But that all comes at a cost, and will Celtic spend the 80 million with over 80 million in the bank? And it would have to be a five-year plan and it would have to take out a, a mortgage on the majority of the money so that it kept cash flow going in the right direction with Celtic. And let's face it, Celtic are in a financial position where institutions would gladly, gladly lend them money, unlike some clubs across the, the, the city. Anyway, that's all your Celtic news this morning. Um, uh, just a, a, an update on what the, the Celtic stadium would cost. 
Jimmy's been talking about Celtic up in Aberdeen, saying that um, Aberdeen need to emulate what Celtic have done. Casper Smichael's been talking about his contract situation and saying that there's plenty of time. Uh, we'll talk about it in the new year. There's more pressing things to do, like win games and win Champions League games. And I think that they will sit down once the Champions League games have done and dusted. It'll be at that point. It'll probably be before then, because Brendan likes to plan things out. And if we do have to get a, a, a second choice keeper in, who do we bring in? Do we bring in someone experienced? Do we elevate Scott Bain back to his natural position as backup keeper? Or do we bring in one of the youth keepers, um, but then two, youth, two really youthful keepers at Celtic? Would that be a good option for Brendan Rodgers? Is Sinisalo ready for taking up the sticks? It's all questions that the gaffer has to answer. Anyway, on that note, have an absolutely sort of fan fantastic day, day to all, to the, Celtic all the Celtic fans, fans all, around all around the world, the world. wherever you are. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, it's all, all of you. All, 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 all around the world. Letters.